I'm Ann Dart. I'm Tracy Stormy. And I'm Kathy Knight. And together we are It Was a Dark and Stormy Book Club, a podcast for mystery lovers. Welcome. If you enjoy our show, please consider contributing to the Dark and Stormy Patreon. By becoming a patron, you will help us create better and quality content. There are also benefits to becoming a patron, such as exclusive content and Dark and Stormy merchandise. Become a supporter at patreon.com slash darkandstormybc. Check our website for the link. We appreciate any and all contributions. Thank you. Hello and welcome to episode 113 of Dark and Stormy Book Club. Please note the change in our name. We took out the longer title so it's no longer It Was a Dark and Stormy Book Club. It's just Dark and Stormy Book Club. Make life a little easier for you and for us. We have an interview with one Agatha nominee, Shauna Holyoke, who was nominated for Best Children or Young Adult. And then we have an interview with Amy Engel. Amy Engel was born in Kansas, and after a childhood spent bouncing between countries like Iran and Taiwan and states like Kansas, California, Missouri, and Washington, D.C., she settled in Kansas City, Missouri, where she lives with her husband and two kids. Before devoting herself full-time to motherhood and writing, she was a criminal defense attorney, which is not quite as exciting as it looks on television. Set in the poorest part of the Missouri Ozarks in a small town with big secrets, the familiar dark opens with a murder. Eve Taggart, desperate with grief over losing her daughter, takes it upon herself to find out the truth about what happened. Eve is no stranger to the dark side of life, having been raised by a hard-edged mother whose lessons Eve tried not to pass on to her own daughter. But Eve may need her mother's cruel brand of strength if she's going to face the reality about her daughter's death and about her own true nature. Her quest for justice takes her from the seedy underbelly of town to the quiet woods and, most frighteningly, back to her mother's trailer for a final lesson. We would like to welcome Amy Engel to the program. She is the author of the book, The Familiar Dark. Welcome, Amy. Thank you so much for having me. The Familiar Dark explores some of the darkest underbelly of America, rural America riddled with poverty and drug addiction. Did you intend to shine a spotlight on the systemic failures of capitalism in this way? That's a great question. You know, generally when I start writing, I don't think too hard about the themes or messages I want to get across. I sort of let those unfold on the page because I feel like if I start the booking too much about what I'm trying to get across to the reader, it can come out sort of forced and it affects the story in a negative way. But I definitely wanted to shine a light on rural poverty. I think it's something that's not addressed a lot, especially in crime fiction. And I'm always interested in people and places that aren't necessarily well represented in books. And so I definitely was looking to get across an idea about poverty and in particular rural poverty. I think a lot of people have an idea that if you're poor, all you have to do is work hard and you can fix it. For people in the Ozarks and there are other places in the country that have sort of been left behind, there's not really an easy way up or out from that, especially if you have generations of family that are poor. And so that was definitely something I was looking to highlight in the book. In a lot of books, the author seems to be putting forth an agenda of some sort. It doesn't seem like this is coming across as an agenda. It definitely shines a light on the failures. Right. I definitely didn't go into it with an agenda. I try to keep the focus small. 
like on particular people and characters in the book. And I think sometimes that's a better way to look at a broader subject. If you can have readers feel empathy and really care about characters, then they may get something broader out of it, or they may just have a really great experience reading the book. And for me, either one of those things is fine. I'm not necessarily going into it trying to beat people over the head with certain ideas. I'm more focused on the individual characters in the book and making sure that they come across as interesting whole people to the readers. Speaking of characters, even her brother really dealt with some issues as far as drug addiction and having an abusive mother. As a criminal defense attorney, did you find this attitude to be the norm or the exception? You mean the attitude as far as overcoming their upbringing? You know, I think it went both ways. I definitely represented people who were sort of raised the same way as Cal and Eve and who continued on in the exact same traditions as their family. And then there were other people I ran across, kids or later generations had tried really hard to go a different way. I saw both sides of it as a criminal defense attorney. One thing I definitely saw a lot as a criminal defense attorney that influences all my writing is that people are rarely black and white. They're rarely all good or all bad. Even people who've done terrible things can be really devoted mothers or fathers or people who are terrible parents can sometimes have these moments of real grace with their family or other people. I always want to put that in my books and make characters well-rounded and not sort of caricatures of all bad or all good. To quote the book, the worst thing you can be is an angry woman, an angry mother. Yes. Another underlying ism highlighted in your book is misogyny. While it's vitally important to shine a light on these appalling practices, do you have any advice on how to overcome them? Oh, boy. (laughs) That's another good question. I fully on board with the Me Too movement and people finally talking about things that we haven't talked about so much in the past and bringing things to light. Sometimes I think putting an easy name on things like it's about in the book how that seems to belong to a different part of the world than where she is. It hasn't really filtered down to her part of the Ozarks. Nothing's really changed there. I'm not sure there's an easy fix or an easy answer for it. In certain parts of the world, there are a lot of avenues to sort of bring the misogyny forward and to shed light on it. In places like where Eve lives, in the backwoods of the Ozarks, where people are poor and there's tons of drug addiction, there's not an easy or even that I have any great ideas on how to make it better or end it other than shedding light on it through writing. You mentioned the Ozarks, that area. Everybody wants to think that these kind of problems only happen on the outer edges of the country, but there is a whole section of the country that really deals with quite a bit. Well, that show has kind of brought some light into it. Oh, (laughs) yeah. Definitely. (laughs) Yeah, Ozark, yes. Yeah, and it's a little bit like Appalachia. For people who aren't familiar with the Midwest, that's probably the closest area I could compare it to, where it's just sort of hidden away from the rest of the world in a lot of ways. A lot of the Ozarks, it sort of feels like time has stood still there and things haven't necessarily progressed the way they have in the rest of the country. So it's definitely an interesting part of the world. Can you give our listeners your website so they can find you in your books? Oh, sure. It's www.amyengel.net. Are you working on any new books right I now? I am, actually. I'm working on one right now. And I, the first couple of weeks of the quarantine, I didn't get as much done. I was thinking, I'm going to just get this whole book done by the time this is over. But it was <laughs> a little hard to concentrate, but I'm starting to get back into it. It's another dark psychological suspense. It's an adult book. It's an adult book, yes. Right. And it It takes place in rural Kansas. It deals with a woman who is serving a life sentence for the murder of her entire family when she was a teenager. But it's not a book where you're trying to find out who really did it. It's more is about the who. That's just my little two-sentence spiel. I never like to talk about books too much as I'm writing them. Do you have a title? 
I do not. I usually don't get titles until I'm done. Either I pull from something in a book or somewhere along the way I get an idea, but I don't have one yet for this new book. What about time frame? Do you have a time frame for the book? I don't. Once it's done, then the publisher will decide when it comes out. So I really don't know. But I'm hoping to get the first draft completely done here shortly. Hopefully it won't be too long. This is kind of a bonus question as far as what the country is going through right now. Can you let our listeners know about your area of the country and what you're seeing and especially in the criminal defense type area? I don't work as a criminal defense attorney anymore, but I know that there have been quite a few cases of coronavirus in the prisons and jails around here. I'm just outside of Kansas City, Missouri in the suburbs. And I know that's a huge concern across the country that it's going to spread in prisons. And I know a lot of people think, oh, well, who cares? Because it's prison. People deserve to be there. A lot of people are in prison for things that are not necessarily violent crimes. They shouldn't just be stuck in there getting sick and spreading it. And it can also spread from the prisons to the community. You know, guards go in and out. So I think we definitely need to get a handle on that. But as far as where I am, we are under a stay-at-home order in Kansas City. And our governor just did a statewide order yesterday that goes into effect Monday. So I guess better late than never on that. But we're starting to pick up on cases here, I think probably because we haven't had a statewide stay-at-home. So I'm a little worried about that. But we are hunkering down here. We're only going out to get groceries once a week. I go out to do that. So, yeah, we're staying safe and healthy so far, but it's definitely worrisome for the whole country and the world, really. Well, Amy, we really appreciate you spending some time with us today as it's the end, virtual time, that is. (laughs) And we wish you all the best with your writing career. We look forward to your next book coming out. Great. Thank you guys so much for having me. Enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe and healthy. Yes, you too. Well, Amy Engel is an author who is new to us. We were not able to read her book, and we apologize for that. But it really sounds like a fascinating story, especially about a mother's grief and also in an area, the Missouri Ozarks, which are very foreign to us. But we want to let any author know that our podcast is a venue for you to get your name out and to highlight your books so that our audience can find you. We definitely look forward to reading it. Shauna Holyoke has been telling stories long before she could ride a bike, and some of them are even true. She writes for kids and teens and thinks it's kind of the best job ever. Kazu Jones and the Denver Dog Nappers is her debut novel. She lives in Idaho Falls, Idaho, with her husband, six of their seven children, and two naughty dogs. Kazu Jones and the Denver Dog Nappers is packed with high-stakes mystery and tons of heart. This first installment in a new series introduces Kazu Jones, a spunky, scrappy detective who's this generation's Harriet the Spy. When a string of dog nappings grips her Denver neighborhood, Kazu Jones vows to track down the culprits. She can't stand to see more dogs go missing, especially once her neighbor's beloved pet is taken because of her gigantic mistake. With the help of her gang, including her best friend and expert hacker, March, and her ginormous, socially anxious pup, Genki, Kazu uncovers evidence that suggests the dog napping ring is bigger than she ever imagined. But the more she digs, the more dangerous her investigation becomes. The dog nappers are getting bolder, and Genki could be next. We would like to introduce Shauna Holyoke, who is an Agatha nominee for the best children's young adult book. Welcome, Shauna. Thank you so much for having me. We read that you have seven children. Wow. (laughs) When do you find time to write? I should probably explain that I am in a blended family. I came to the marriage with three kids, and my husband came with four. Obviously, we were initially overwhelmed, but we don't have them all, all the time. We've been married for eight years now, and we get everybody home on the weekends and then sometimes throughout the week. So it's never really impacted my writing because my kids are all old enough that they're in school. 
When they go to school, I write, and then when they come home, I shut my laptop and I mother them. Having seven, you obviously love children, <laughs> as any mother does. Do any of your kids show up in your books? You know, when you asked that, I thought it was really interesting. No, I don't think I've ever dropped one of my kids into one of my stories, but they do have lots of characteristics and traits that my kids have. So I do feel like I can make realistic middle grade characters because I've had all kinds running through my house. Most of them are teenagers now, which is a whole different category.